I'm excited to share my journey through the LSAT with everyone today. Um, I initially started my LSAT journey a few years ago, um, a bit on and off, but I've been studying for a little bit over a year. When I took the LSAT initially, um, a few times on record, I kept scoring the 150s and I felt frustrated that I just could not break into my goal of breaking 160 um, for almost five months. And I thought, um, and now I'm hoping to break 170 um, this upcoming test, which I honestly thought I would never say at the beginning of this journey. So I thought sharing with you all um, my journey and how I got there could somehow inspire or help anyone else go through the, going through this process. Um, I want to share you my main breakthroughs that helped me achieve um, 160s and beyond. I'm going to share with you my biggest mistakes from each section and lessons I learned moving forward that I think would be helpful for anyone else in the same situation. Um, and if I could go back in time and tell myself these overall types of issues I ran into and these takeaways, I think I could have reached my goals a lot faster. Um, so my, the first section in logic games, um, logic games has always been kind of my best section because I have somewhat of a math background, but even then I had some larger issues that prevented me from achieving my full potential. One of my most significant mistakes I made at the beginning was just, the, and this all has to do with in a test taking situation, was um, drawing out rules immediately and then going into the questions without really taking time to diagram. And I came over time, I came to learn over time that taking the time to diagram and making inferences in your initial diagram will help you quickly answer questions later on. Um, another lesson that I learned throughout my process was um, to start doing the, not, not being afraid to do the questions out of order, um, particularly from local to global questions. I know um, Steve and some of the other instructors have um, brought this up, but to me, this means answering all the questions to start with if, if first, and then moving on to questions that start with which. And essentially this, the local questions will create new diagrams. <clears throat> For me, that will help me answer global questions more quickly later. Um, logical reasoning section is probably the section I improved the most on throughout my journey so far. Um, one of my biggest mistakes in logical reasoning was not actively engaging with the stimulus as I read it. By this, I mean I would identify the con conclusion through indicator words, and then I move on to the question stem without really thinking much else of um, the time between the evidence and the conclusion. Before, I was just reading words on a page in a similar fashion I would do for school, which was kind of artificially learning the information to re reiterate it later, which is the type of reading st strategy I came to learn would not be useful for the LSAT. Um, one way I improved this issue was through visualizing the stimulus as a mental picture or movie in my head as I read it. By this, I mean I literally created an image in my head of what I was reading on the page and using my imagination. Like if I, if the argument was about boats on an ocean, I'm literally picturing boats on an ocean. Um, this is a per personal preference because I'm more of a visual learner, so that helped for me. Um, next, a huge um, breakthrough I had was breaking this argument down little by little. Um, if I did not understand the first sentence of an argument, I would not move on to the second sentence. If necessary, I would rephrase the argument in my own words. Um, that helps keep the same ideas in a ma manner I can understand better. Um, and third point, as a personal, pre personal preference, I like to read the stimulus first and then go to the question stem. I know um, a lot of other people do it the opposite way, but this is just my own view. So I don't go, so I'm more engaged with the argument actively and don't go in with a biased point of view of a certain question type. Um, in most questions, this is also a personal preference. Most questions will have an argument um, with a gap in them. So I approach all questions kind of like a method of reasoning or flaw reasoning questions. And by this, I mean, I'll actively like think in my head um, what the author assumes or what the author overlooks that, like almost like a flaw um, point of view for all the argument types. Um, and I can always make a different presentation how I do that another time. Um, and so lastly, for reading comprehension, reading comp had always been my um, worst section, I would say. It's just something that um, I had to improve just like with practice over time. It's no doubt the most difficult section, and I honestly think it's one of the most personal sections um, 
on the LSAT. By personal, I mean, I think that the variance in high in the way that high level test takers approach reading comprehension is larger than any other section. Um, I think my biggest mistake at first was um, worrying about finishing all the passages. And this approach made me not engage with the passage and not double check my answer choices with information. At first, I so at first to fix this problem, I slowed down to read for structure in the main point. The way I now approach reading comprehension comprehension is having the mindset of why did the author write this and how did he or she go about writing this, which is my way of saying what's the main point in structure. Of course, there are other features to the passage you need to know, such as tone and viewpoints. But for me, just thinking about why it was written and how it came to that point covers everything that I need in the time. And now I don't focus on the details. Um, after reading a paragraph, I also like to pause and think about what I just read and anticipate where the passage is going. Um, this kind of increases my level of engagement with the passage. And sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong about where it's going next, but the anticipation is forcing an engagement that helps with my understanding. Um, and something that kind of helped more with my review um, was knowing that every answer choice will have some sort of support directly in the passage and to not choose an answer um, until you can point where in the passage that support comes from. This is this really changed um, the way that I reviewed um, incorrect and correct questions. Um, and then also I similar, this is something that I learned from Steve was to not be afraid to skip questions that are difficult and also do them out of order through the, um, I think it's through a point and structure refer referring to lines and inference questions last. Um, yeah, and so then just overall, I would say my like lessons learned so far is, and this is goes for not just test taking strategies, but also studying, is that go for quality over quantity in problems. And by this, I mean the amount of questions you have does not mean anything if you do not have the takeaways from the ones you've done, especially in logical reasoning. I would say in a non-testing situation, when I was doing just practice problems, one of my biggest mistakes was my concern with the amount of questions I was cramming instead of how much I was learning from each question I completed. And um, in, the, in a testing environment, go for accuracy over speed. As my familiar, familiarity with the test increased, my speed naturally increased as well. Um, I was never able to complete a single section to begin with for a really long time. And then naturally, um, it just naturally I started being able to finish each section with additional time. Um, also do not, I like take review really seriously. Not only do you, should you review like your wrong questions, you should review the ones you got right as well, which kind of um, changed the way that I um, studied when I started looking at the ones that got correct and understanding the reasoning um, helped me get a, like a deeper understanding of the test. Um, also, don't be afraid to skip questions in a testing situation. Now I typically skip longer questions that'll take me more time to do, such as parallel reasoning, since they just take time and I'll come back to them later. And I also skip my least favorite question types at first too, um, such as weekend. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. If everyone has any questions, um, just let me know. That was fantastic, Natalie. Well done. So many nuggets there. I feel like it was a great overview of your LSAT journey mm -hmm. up to this point. I've got plenty of thoughts here, but I see you've already got a question here from Solomon. So I'll let him kick it off. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, Steve. I'll go in after. No, please. You first. All right. you first. I just I just have comments, but oh, okay, ask your questions. Awesome. No, Natalie, that was a wonderful presentation. I'm hoping to one day have your problem <laughs> to try to get from 166 to 170. So that was awesome. Um, I guess I was just curious um, for the LR um, specifically, um, mm -hmm. how did you, what was your review process? Or like, what did that look like? Did you have a specific journal? Is there things that you did in the beginning that you would change now? So I'm just curious, like how you structure your LR and how you review in a sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so I keep a master Google Doc or like a document with every question I've ever gotten wrong. Um, but also, I would say that what really changed my engagement with um, the reasoning is the Socratic review method. And that is just writing out like in your own words, first rewriting the argument by um, evidence, filler, step conclusions, conclusions, and then um, in your own words, write the answer choices, right and wrong as well. Um, and another, what, and another one of Steve's um, tips about 
restructuring an argument to do different question types also really helped me as well. Um, and also the flaw in the reasoning question types in particular, um, changing different answer choices to fit the flaw in question, if that makes sense. I know Steve has a whole um, a whole class on that too, that um, I think that class really helped me. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. I actually just watched that one earlier today, so that was really cool. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Soak all that one in, it's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that, Natalie. And I, I think for those who are curious about that class, I think it was the, my second role of statement workshop in the logical reasoning section of the course where I'm kind of transforming a stimulus from one question type to another, just changing the perspective. But I'm glad to hear that that was, that was helpful. Um, one thing that really stood out to me, Natalie, and there are so many things in your presentation, but I think the accuracy over speed element is a really important lesson. I think too often students rush right into the time to work, mm -hmm. but in fact, slowing down and focusing on accuracy first for a while, longer than you might want to, can actually help you speed up in the end by giving you that deeper understanding. Is that kind of where you're coming from on that? Yes, that's like to the T of what I experienced because at first, um, at the, my first, when I first started studying, I was just so frustrated that I couldn't finish the section. So then I had gotten to a terrible habit of just speeding through just to say I'd finished at the end. And then my score went down. And that actually happened in a real test taking situation when I took the LSAT a few years ago, when I first started studying a few years ago. But um, yeah, once I finally slowed down and just took my time, um, time, the speed came automatically and it's kind of insane how that works. And it's, and it's real and trust the process with that. Awesome. And would you mind just sharing more about your overall timeline up to this point? Yeah. Like when okay. you started, when you got your 169, what yeah. your steps are after that? Yeah, of course. Um, well, so initially I was, I started studying for the LSAT, um, my, the end of my undergrad in 2018, but that's because I initially wanted to go to law school directly after undergrad. Um, and I had been studying for maybe four or five months and I couldn't really break even a 150. And finally I went in after probably five months of on and off studying, like self-studying um, and scored like 155 and then try to go in again, like a few more times and still getting, I got a lower score, like a 154 than a 157. And then at this point, um, I ended up just um, taking a break completely from it and then picking it back up almost, um, oh my gosh, my timeline's all messed up, and a year and a half later and just completely started from scratch. Um, and that's when I kind of did um, more of a course. And then that's when I also found Steve. Um, and I started, self-studying over COVID and um, I, I took the test um, in July and I had had to cancel the score, but my very first score on record since that 155 became a 165. Um, and then I retook the test in January and then got the 169, if that makes sense. Sorry, I'm like getting my own time I'm confused. <laughs> I would need to write it all down for it to be <laughs> concise. <laughs> You've been at it for a while. You, yeah, got your yeah. you got you got you got your one sixty nine in January. Yeah. Then I think you you took a break for a bit, right, to focus on school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, in a graduate program right now, so I had to take a break. Um, and also had some like health concerns going on, so I had to take a break for two months. Um, so I'm kind of picking it back up now. Um, so hoping for the best for June. But I think it's it all kind of comes naturally if you've been studying it for a while. So basically, if you put in tons, several months of studying, countless hours, it comes naturally in the end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but also, I would say, like, if you feel like you're not ready, definitely don't force it. I think that was one thing I did during COVID. That was a mistake on my end. I tried to pick it up back up April of 2020, and I was like, I'll be ready for it by, I can't remember if I took the junior college test. I'm like, I'm going to be ready for it. I'm just going to do my best I can. And I ended up having to cancel the score that I did. Cause I was just like, that was a terrible test on my part, I was not ready at all. So don't, don't gaslight yourself. <laughs> if you're not ready, you know, you're not ready. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.